everything's going to be okay. Help is on the way. Oh, thank you. Hi, how are you? Hi. What's going on here today? Thanks. What happened? She insisted, this is my CEO, she insisted on coming to the board meeting and she collapsed. Oh, okay. And what, um, do you have any idea what's wrong with her? Yeah, she's 34 weeks pregnant and this is her fourth pregnancy. 34 weeks. Yeah. Okay, very good. And, and this is her fourth pregnancy? Baby. We've covered Hi. her, we've tried to keep Hi. her warm. Hi, and my name is Michael and this is Susie. What's going on here today? Hi, um, oh, I'm going to become having my baby. Okay, all right, why do you think that you have a baby? Well, I'm kind of due today. Okay. But I'm always late. This, this is really scary. I thought I'd be in a hospital. Okay, all right, well, we, we can do everything that we need to do for you right here. Do you feel um, that you have an urge to push it off? Um, um, my... My um, contractions are really close. I think. Okay, so how far apart do you think they are? Uh, I, I think like one or two minutes. I haven't been uh, counting. Okay. Fast. All right, very good. And uh, was this a, preg a normal pregnancy so far? No. All right, hang right in there. If you feel 160 the, over 50. If, if you feel the urge that you have to push, go right ahead and do that. What's your first name? My name is Mary. Okay, very good, Mary. All right, let me just see your pulse here. All right, and what was the last time you ate today, Mary? Um, I, I wasn't really hungry. I, oh. I ate um, this morning early. Oh. Okay, very good. All right, I'm just going to take a, a peek here. We want to see if there's any crowning or if you your water's broken or anything yet, okay? okay. Have you had any fluids uh, um, today so far? Um, any discharge? I, I, I think there has been a little bit of fluids, but I don't think my water broke yet. Uh, okay, very good. All right, so we do have uh, some, some uh, membranes and some, some crowning here. So, so, Mary, I think what is best, I think we're just going to set up to get ready to do delivery right here, okay? Okay. And so, so we're going to start to work that way. Right. Is the baby okay? All right. Oh, yes, the baby's going to be fine. We're just going to get ready to have a, you know, to do, do the delivery here for you, all right? Instead of trying to put you in the ambulance, we might as well do it right here. All right, we're both trained and, and able to help you out, all right? And uh, so we're going to start working on that right now. Right? If you feel the urge to push, you just need to tell us, okay? Right, we want to get that chalk in here. Yeah. Yeah. All right, all right. We're just gonna lift up your your buttocks here a little bit so we can get this chalk underneath you, so we don't get the floor all messy. All right. All right. Okay. So we've got some pads ready to go. Okay. We're just gonna take a look now. All right. And again, Mary, if you feel the urge to push. You just go right ahead, all right? We're we're ready here, okay? okay. Did anyone call my and, husband? Uh, well, we'll have somebody call him right now for you, okay? Okay. And do you have any allergies to medications? No. All right, have you taken any medications? No, just vitamins. Okay, very good. All right, so you just try to relax, all right? You've been through this before, so you know what to do. All right, so if you begin to feel the urge to push, you just go right ahead and do that. Okay. And we're ready to, uh, to, to grab the baby here. Okay, so if you, get, if you feel the urge to push, you go right ahead and push there, Mary. Okay, good job, okay? Baby's good, coming. good job, all right? The baby's starting to come out now a little bit, so good job pushing. Okay, all right, the baby's head is out, Mary, so you're doing a great job. Keep it up. Right? When you feel the urge to push, you just go right ahead and push. All right, very good. Good job. Okay, here comes the baby. All right, that baby's coming out nicely, Mary. Good job. Great job pushing. Okay. All right, here, here we go. Here we go. Oh, she's delivered. Okay, so we have a little girl here. All right, how's the baby doing? How we, Is she how's okay? Sorry? She's All right, little, okay. Baby. All right, having some... Is she okay? Yes, yeah, she looks like she's having a little trouble getting transition here. We're going to work on her, and we have paramedics here as well that are going to assist and take the baby oh. and start working on the baby right okay, now. What's going on, Mary? Okay. So you're doing a great job. Newborn little girl. Okay. 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 Okay.
Great job, okay? So so they're going to take the baby out to the ambulance and begin working on the baby right away just to make sure that the baby transitions fine. Okay. All right? So you're doing so you're doing great here. All okay. right? So it's going to be a few more minutes, all right? We have to get the placenta delivered. All right? Then after that, what we're going to do is we're going to get you loaded in the ambulance and we'll get you on the way to the hospital too, okay? Okay. So does the baby have a name? Melissa. Melissa, oh, isn't that very nice? Her her siblings will really appreciate that name, I'm sure. I'm really worried because I really wanted to see her. Okay, I understand that. And we're going to get you into the ambulance shortly and you'll be able to see the baby. And and if not, we certainly will unite you and the baby at the hospital. And the okay. placenta. Okay, and so the placenta is out now. All right. So we're just going to be a few more minutes here, Mary, and we'll, we're going to get you packaged up and get you on the way to the hospital as well. Okay. But you didn't expect this to happen today when you got up, did you? No. Oh, no, I wouldn't have come to work. Okay. So, so your pulse is doing good. We're going to take your blood pressure again, and then we're going to package you up in the ambulance. But the, I think the meeting is going to have to be canceled for today. Oh, that's okay now. All right, Cindy. The next time you feel a contraction, I want you to push. You're doing really good. Keep pushing. You're doing perfect. All right, almost there. Your little girl's coming out. All right. You feel that next contraction? I want you to push, Cindy. Here we go again. Keep pushing. You're doing really good. I see your head. All right, you're doing good. Next contraction, I want you to do the same thing. You're gonna push on the next contraction. All right, it appears the shoulder is hanging up. Can you reposition the legs, sure. knees to chest? We're just gonna move your legs now to get a better angle at the baby. Our next contraction, I want you to push. A little bit of super pubic pressure? Yes, please. Here she comes. I see her head. All right. Okay, now we gotta deliver the shoulders. Keep coming, We're, now we got the legs to go. All right, your little girl is out. You're doing really good, Cindy. All right, Cindy, when you feel that next contraction, I want you to push. You're doing really good. All right. Keep pushing. Your little girl's coming. All right, next contraction, I want you to continue to push. Keep pushing. You're doing really good. All right, next contraction, I want you to push. Keep pushing, there you go. Your little girl's here. 
All right, Cindy. I need you to push. Keep pushing. Hold on one second. Stop pushing. I don't see the other limb. Nope. All right, Cindy, I don't want you to push right now. I'm going to feel for the umbilical cord. And I want to make sure that the baby is not compressing the umbilical cord. Let me get in position. I found the umbilical cord and I'm moving the baby away from the cord. Cindy, we need you to get to the hospital quickly. The baby is not in the correct position. So we are going to move you into a safer position for both you and the baby. Tyler and Seth are gonna move you and we're gonna have you on your knees and hand position. Okay. They ready? will tell you when you're gonna move. Okay, we're gonna start moving on three. You ready? One. Two, three. All right, Cindy, I don't want you to push right now. I'm keeping pressure off of the umbilical cord. All right, Cindy, just relax. I don't want you to push right now. We're repositioning the baby. You're doing really good, Cindy. All right, Cindy, next contraction, I need you to push. You're doing really good. I see your baby's head. Here she comes. Keep pushing, you're doing really good. All right, hold on one second. Stop pushing. I see the umbilical cord around the baby's neck. I'm going to gently try to slide this over the baby's head. There you go. Hold on, Cindy. You're doing really good. All right, it's Perfect. clear. All right, keep pushing. Keep pushing. You're doing really good. Here she comes. All right, almost there. Keep pushing. All right, I've got your little girl. Here she is. You've got a beautiful little girl. All right, Cindy, I see your baby's head. On your next contraction, I want you to push. You're doing really good. Here she comes. I see your head. Keep pushing. Hold on, Cindy, stop pushing. I see the cord yeah. wrapped around the baby's neck. I'm going to attempt to slide the umbilical cord over her head. I'm not able to, All right. it's too tight. Okay. Can you clamp the cord yep. and cut that? I'm just going to clamp it right here. Cindy, I want you to stop pushing. We're repositioning the baby. All right, one clamp. You're, yes, you're doing really good. And the second clamp. Yep, looks like good enough. And then I want you to cut right between the two clamps. You betcha. All right, just watch the top hand. All right. There you go. I'm holding the baby's head. Hold on, Cindy. You're doing really good. Yeah, all right, we're clear. All right, clear. Remove the, the rest of the cord from her neck. Okay, perfect, right around there. There it goes. Hold on, Cindy. Good. One second. Perfect. Okay. All right. I'm Go ahead. ahead, next contraction, I want you to push. Your little girl's coming. Hold on, here she comes. Keep pushing. Almost there. Good, good, good. All right, almost there. Just have to deliver her legs. Good. You've got a beautiful baby girl. All right, Cindy. I see the baby's head. Don't push right now. I see the umbilical cord. Yeah. I'm gonna position my hand and get the baby's head away from the cord so it doesn't compress. 
Cindy, I don't want you to push right now. We're repositioning your baby. We're gonna need an emergent transport to the hospital. All right, I'm in position. Cindy, I don't want you to push. I just want you to try to relax. You're doing really good, Cindy. All right, you just relax, Cindy. We're going to get you to the hospital. All right, Cindy, here comes the placenta. We have a prolapsed uterus. We need an emergent reduction. I'm going to form a fist, keep my fingers in. Hold on, Cindy. There we go. All right, good job, Cindy. All right, Seth, so child's really not doing well here. It seems to be pretty lethargic. All right. There's a little more yep. drying and stimulation. Okay, sounds good. I'm going to try and kind of stimulate the bottom of the feet a little bit more. Okay, I'm still not getting any of Still nothing? No, I think you need to ventilate the patient. Okay. Some okay. BBM. Great, thank you. Uh, can we get a smaller mask? That's a little bit better. Yep. Okay. Smaller Great. mask, and there's cool. some uh, airways in there in case you need them. Okay, good. I'm going to go ahead and put the, get the pulse ox going. So if you see any chest rise with this, how's that looking? Yep, we have good equal chest rise. Okay, good. Pulse ox is in place on the right palm. Okay. We have an initial pulse ox on room air at 84%. Okay, I'm gonna double check the airway. The airway still looks clear. Okay. Dave, I got a umbilical pulse rate about 40 and that's corresponding to what we're seeing on the monitor there all right um, we that's really need to start great. compressions okay let's get some uh, oxygen on yep i'm gonna and just gonna plug this in and hand it off to you and start compressions okay all right. and i'm gonna get an opa in also okay, okay. go ahead okay as soon as you start bagging we'll do the three to one okay ready Ooh, all right, oh, all right. Okay. Much more vigorous cry now. Go get yep. that OPA Take out. Up, yeah. All right. The airway still looks pretty clear. Good. All right. Want to switch to some blow by? Yep. That sounds like a great idea. And starting to feel an increase in that umbilical pulse. Okay. Pulse ox is now up into the mid 90s. Okay. Good. The umbilical pulse is uh, approaching 70 right now. Great. Excellent. Okay. All right. Let's keep them a little bit warm. Put yep. some. Cover back up. Warm. Yep. Okay. Good. And pulse ox is now in the high 90s, and I have an umbilical pulse rate of 90 that's corresponding to the pulse ox. Great. Much better. Good. One of the newer protocols that a lot of people from different regions may not be familiar with is the avulse tooth protocol. And essentially this protocol is intended to be used when you have a tooth that has become avulsed or has fallen out. Um, in this case, we want to make sure that the tooth is intact. We don't want to be re-implanting any fractured teeth. And when you are handling the tooth that has come out, you want to make sure that you handle it by the crown and not the root. When you have a patient who does not meet any of the contraindications for reimplantation, and I'm going to go over that in a few minutes, um, what we want to do is to make sure that we um, gently clean off or rinse off the um, the root itself. We want to be careful that we don't scrub it because we don't want to take off any of the ligaments that may still be adhering to the root. So we're going to go ahead and just rinse it off, and then. The other important thing is to examine the area in which you're going to reimplant the tooth to make sure that there isn't a blood clot there. If there is a blood clot, that blood clot has to be removed. So one of the ways that it can be removed is with the suction unit. 
can just go ahead and take that blood clot out with the suction. And once that area is clean, you can simply go ahead and re-implant the tooth. When you do that, it's important to make sure that you look and see which is the inside of the tooth and which is the outside of the tooth, because we certainly wouldn't want to mix that up. And once you are done with that, you can take a gauze pad to put in between the teeth to have the patient bite down on, to kind of remind them that they should not be opening their mouth uh, while this tooth has been freshly implanted. Now, the reason why this has become a pre-hospital protocol is because the best chance for that tooth to be re-implanted and to take well is if it is done as quickly as possible, ideally within about five minutes of the tooth falling out. So when we do this, we want to make sure that we consider the reasons why we don't want to put it in or the contraindications. If the tooth is fractured, we don't want to re-implant it. If the patient has altered mental status, that would be a contraindication to trying to re-implant it because we certainly wouldn't want this to turn into an airway emergency. That would be frowned upon. If the patient requires transportation for whatever reason in a supine position, if they're hypotensive or something like that, we certainly wouldn't want to re-implant it because, again, this can become a potential airway issue. If you have a patient that has any cardiac issues that require antibiotics prior to procedures, this would be a reason why we wouldn't want to re-implant this in the field. And the reason for that is that that would typically indicate that the patient has an, a potential infectious process or um, vegetations on a heart valve that if we do any manipulation of the teeth, it can cause the bacteria to get into the blood and then the patients can have a a complication of an infection within the heart itself. So we don't want to re-implant the tooth in that case until they have gotten antibiotics. Another contraindication is if this is a deciduous tooth, which means if it's a child's tooth, if it's not a permanent tooth, we don't need to re-implant it in those cases. So if we can't, or if there is a reason not to re-implant the tooth, uh, we would need to transport it in some medium to the hospital. Now, ideally, the best medium would be the patient's own saliva, uh, but any sort of a clean liquid would do. Sterile saline or even milk um, is a possibility. So one of the things that you can consider doing is to uh, take a saline flush and open up the saline flush. And use the saline in there in order to transport the tooth. You can take the plunger out of the back. You can put the tooth in the saline. Put the plunger on the other end and remove the air out of the distal port. If you do that, it's obviously important that we make sure that we label it and that we don't throw this out with uh, the rest of the equipment at the end of the call because we have our tooth in here. Uh, but there are many ways of transporting a tooth. This is just one idea for you to keep in the back of your mind. Hi, this is Michael Daly. I'm the Regional EMS Medical Director for the Hudson Mohawk Region, or REMO, in New York State. And I'm going to spend some time talking about patella dislocations and reduction of patella dislocations. So what is a patella dislocation? Well, a patella, as you know, is the kneecap. And the kneecap exists within a tendon across the front of the knee. It's not actually a part of the integral joint of the knee, but instead rides on top of it. If you look at this slide, the patella itself sits in a groove on the top of the femur and can, in, with stressors, slide to the side laterally or towards the outside of the leg most of the time into what's called a patella dislocation. When it sits there, it gets stuck. And because it's stuck, it causes a significant amount of pain for the person suffering this injury. A patella dislocation almost always happens with lateral movement, although it has been reported medially, but not as often. Usually this is young people and they're doing some type of athletic event. Usually it's involving a planting of the foot and turning. Only very rarely will a patella dislocation occur with a direct blow to the knee, 
moving the patella. In a motor vehicle crash or other significant traumatic mechanism, what will more frequently happen would be a rupture of the patella tendon or a fracture of the patella. The other possibility is a true knee dislocation. But what you need to differentiate will be a dislocation of the patella from a knee dislocation. So who does this happen to? Most frequently, it happens to young people. It almost, with great frequency, it happens in females more than males. The trauma associated is usually relatively minor or didn't even seem like trauma at all. Someone cutting and turning when they're running, playing lacrosse or soccer, or somebody planting a foot while they're playing basketball. These are very, very common ways that this can occur. There's an obvious lateral deformity right on top of the knee, and the patient is almost always in considerable pain. They can't weight bear, they can't extend their knee, and if they get treated, there's an almost immediate relief of pain. In some cases, there may be an associated fracture, and in one paper, it's reported as 25%. However, in the case series that we've watched, we have seen no associated fractures with a patella dislocation. All that said, why should we reduce a patella dislocation? EMS providers generally don't reduce dislocated joints. Well, in this case, it creates a significant need for pain medication. So in many cases, a patella dislocation really should be an ALS call if that patella is causing severe pain for the person who suffered the injury. In rural or understaffed agencies, we don't have many advanced life support providers with the ability to give controlled substances. And as a result, this can leave us with no ALS coverage for patients that have more profound life-threatening needs for paramedic or critical care technician care. If not reduced, we get significant ongoing pain throughout transport for this patient. And frankly, there are less complications with early reduction. One of the most common complications of a patella dislocation actually comes from extremely aggressive and good care. Somebody gets a lot of pain medicine. If they get a lot of pain medicine and then the patella is reduced, they then have pain medicine with no pain and they can actually stop breathing. So the best treatment for a patella dislocation very clearly is reduction rather than pain medicine. So why reduce the patella dislocation? First, it's good medicine. It is good medicine to do something that can just relieve pain and leave somebody feeling more comfortable. Is there any potential harm from attempting to reduce a patella? No. Also notably, if it's reduced, there's no pain or very little pain afterwards, which is good for our patients. There is no risk. If you attempt to reduce a patella that's broken or you attempt to reduce a patella where the tendon is ruptured, it won't work and it may cause the patient some discomfort, but ultimately it's not going to cause any long-lasting uh, long problems for our patient. So because of all of these reasons, the Collaborative Protocols physicians approached the state with time for a new protocol and we developed training for patella reductions. So let's talk about a case. There's a 21-year-old female. She has right knee pain and swelling after twisting, twisting while dancing. She says the knee gave out, and she now has 10 on 10 knee pain, severe. She can't bear weight, can't extend her knee. She's been made more comfortable while she was stabilized, but she's still having severe pain over the end of her femur. Let's watch a video quickly. Here we have a normal patella. Put my phone. Looks totally normal. And here we have a dislocated patella moved over to the side. See it sitting lateral, normal, dislocated. And you see the leg is slightly bent. All right. And what the doctor is going to do now is reduce that patella dislocation. First, he's going to straighten the leg. All right. So I'm going to straighten your leg out. Now move the patella back where it belongs. All done. You and it's reduced. It. All done. Whoa, that was quick. You did it, Kai. You did it. Does it feel better? Wow. Yeah. Great job. <laughs> you did it. Great and job. you're practically famous now. <laughs> Mimics? Well, one is a knee dislocation where the lower leg is no longer in the same plane as the thigh. This can happen from a direct blow to the knee. Uh, it can also happen. Particularly, I think about this in a motor vehicle crash where you end up with major ligamentous injuries where all of the major ligaments that stabilize the knee rupture. 
This can actually lead to major vascular complications as well because the bones will press back on the blood vessels going through the space in the back of the knee. Quadriceps tendon rupture where the patella will be high riding. This is actually the patellar tendon that holds that patella in place and the patella will be high riding or up on the leg rather than lateral. Uh, there'll be a big divot where the patella should be. And the other possibility will be a patella fracture. This can happen with direct blows to the patella. And there'll be a divot where the patella should be. There'll be no lateral mass, but also there'll be severe pain right over the middle of the knee. Knee dislocations, as shown here, are associated with major ligamentous disruptions. They do frequently reduce um, posterior dislocations where the tibia moves backwards. Think about neurovascular compromise because the popliteal injury artery will very frequently be damaged as well. This is a knee dislocation, a true knee dislocation. You can see it both in this view as well as the radiographic view that actually the tibia is posterior to the femur. The patella, as you can see on this x-ray, is actually still perfectly in place. Treatment for this pre-hospitally would be simple stabilization. And you may very well find out that this is incredibly unstable and the tibia may slip right back in place where it belongs. And that's absolutely fine. Just as long as if you happen to find that, you report it appropriately upon arrival in the emergency department. There are not a lot of times in medicine where we get an opportunity to high five our patients after a procedure. That clearly was satisfying. The interesting twist on that patella dislocation was the patient was stabilized in a long frac pack leg splint with a SAM splint rolled up behind her knee. If the SAM splint had been inadvertently removed and her leg had straightened, that patient would have spontaneously reduced that patella. Let's look at a couple of cases that are not patella dislocations. First, let's look on the left side of the screen. On the left side of the screen, we have a void here where the patella should be. The patella is here riding high. That means that we either have a patella tendon or a quadriceps tendon rupture, or we have a patella fracture. One way or the other, we do not have a lateral mass here or lateral swelling indicating that the patella is lateral. We can see the patella is right up here above the knee and above the space where it should be. If we look to the right of your screen, you can see that the entire knee appears to be disrupted. I can't actually tell looking at that where which piece of the knee is supposed to be. That is a true knee dislocation. Here's another case. This is a 16 year old male who was doing squats in gym class. He was squatting with much more weight than he had ever done before. When he was doing this, he immediately dropped to the ground and dropped the weights because of pain in his left knee. He's unable to walk and he can't extend his lower leg. If you look, you can actually see that the patella is very high riding on this leg and that actually the space where the patella would normally be here seems to be empty. In this case, this is actually a quadriceps tendon rupture and the patient was putting more stress on his leg than that quadriceps tendon could handle. If you look compared to his other leg, here is a normal patella, here is a high riding patella and comparing the two legs will very frequently give you an answer. Here's another case. We had a 21 year old male softball player. He has severe left knee pain and swelling. He was batting and he twisted on a flexed and planted left foot. He says his knee gave out and he had 10 on 10 knee pain. He can't bear any weight and he can't extend the knee. If you look, this patient has a laterally displaced kneecap or patella. The patella should be in the middle of the leg and it's not there. Treatment, reduce it. What you're going to do is put a little bit of force moving the patella medially and you're going to extend the leg at the knee, which means lift that foot and straighten the leg. After you do that, you're going to immobilize the patient and bring them to the hospital. Here's another video demonstrating the same thing. For this video, I'd actually like to thank Dr. Maney and also five quad volunteer ambulance from the SUNY Albany campus who assisted us with this reduction.
As we've seen, most of the leg is intact, but the patella should be in the center. It's lateral and then displaced. We're going to extend at the knee, pull, pull the foot towards you, and I'm going to um, put steady pressure on the patella just to help ease it in, and everything's going to feel better. All right? Okay. Ready? Go. Okay. And yeah, Holy all shit, done. Shit, that was fantastic. And it looks normal. <laughs> yes, sir. <laughs> <laughs> now, certainly, I apologize to the language, but clearly, this was a spontaneous utterance by the patient. Um, again, while there were no fi high fives involved in this reduction, um, handshakes right after uh, procedure is also a clear indication that this went well. Um, you can see that the squad that brought the patient in had had him appropriately splinted with longboard splints prior to uh, his care in the emergency department. But now we have a way to do this without needing to splint this patient in a position that remains painful. You can reduce patella dislocations. How do you document it? Well, you need to be really careful to make sure to indicate knee pain in your complaints. And if possible, you can write in suspected patella dislocation. For everybody using electronic PCRs, please make sure to use a procedure code of patella reduction if it's available. If not, you can do this as um, procedures for immobilization. We're working to add this to ePCR programs across the state, but currently that may not be a patella, a, excuse me, that may not be a procedure code that's available for you. Every single time you do a patella reduction, please go to your regional website and complete a brief, cross, brief questionnaire. The questionnaire is going to start by asking how much pain the patient was having and ultimately how much pain the patient had after the procedure. No one's ever really done a statewide procedure for patella reduction before. And across the collaborative, which is all of New York State, north of the city, we've got a potential to collect a lot of cases of these reductions. And this will give us an opportunity to learn how EMTs, advanced EMTs, critical care techs and paramedics are doing with this new skill. We believe that this will be something that will be done well and will work well for our patients. If there's anything that we're missing, we, we want to make sure that we learn about it. Ultimately, we want to know how many times are we using this protocol and is the education that you've received adequate? Bottom line, reducing a patella dislocation or a kneecap dislocation is really good patient care. And all EMS providers can easily do this. Document it appropriately, assist us with the quality improvement project, and if there's any question of the diagnosis or appropriate treatment, call medical control and talk to a physician about making sure that you're doing the right thing for your patient. Remember, first do no harm.